I recently took a trip up to Abyss Aquatics in Manchester where they showed me their Uber Air yellow purple hybrid tank. And while I was there I saw this rather lovely saltwater display tank that runs on canister filters and with very little maintenance. Now because this tank isn't a finely tuned machine running off spreadsheets and aquarium controllers, this video will just show you a rough guide of how the tank runs and how healthy the livestock looks. And I'll list the finer details in the description below so you can geek out later. The tank is 6 feet long and around 700 litres or 185 gallons and it's been running for several years now so it is well and truly established. It's a mixed reef so it has various wavy soft corals for lovely movement mixed in with a bevy of fleshy LPS corals for texture and of course a few sticky SPS corals for extra stickiness. Because there's no sump, the filtration is simply three Eheim canister filters. For the most part, there's nothing special in the canister filters, and I'm told they simply have the media they came with out of the box. So that's sponges to remove fish waste and uneaten food, ceramic media for bacteria to colonise, and activated carbon for water clarity. The canisters get cleaned on average every three to four months, and the tank runs on a relaxed water change schedule of roughly 25% every two or three weeks, but they don't fret if they miss a week here or there, and they don't measure exactly 25%, they just do whatever looks about right. And in a hobby where many of us, myself included, like to run squillions of filters, probes and controllers, it was refreshing to see a tank running successfully on such simple filtration. Most of the corals looked healthy, and indeed many were actually growing like crazy. And while it might not surprise you to see more hardy LPS and soft corals thriving, the SPS corals also looked in really good condition. I feel like some of the S corals would benefit from a smidge in more flow, while others would pop a little more under a slightly bluer lighting spectrum, but that's nitpicking really, and the SPS corals in this mixed reef look a lot happier than most of the LPS corals in my own Aquapora dominated tank. In terms of fish, they have around 21 that I could count, five of which were large tangs for algae control, but there were also antheas, wrasses, a parrotfish, gobies, the obligatory pair of clownfish, and a few more. The owner told me the tangs have lived in harmony for years and that the clowns spawn regularly, although they tend to eat their babies when they're born. Now, I'm not a parent myself, but I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do that, or that it's at least frowned upon. It's frowned upon, like masturbating on an airplane. And the fish get fed a lot in this tank. They get a mix of pellets from an auto feeder, as well as flake food and frozen mysis throughout the day. All of which normally means two things, high nutrients and lots of nuisance algae. And I'd certainly class the nutrients as high on this tank. They use a freshwater product called Bio Nitrate X to remove nitrates and Seachem Phosgard to control phosphates. But nitrates still get as high as around 40 and phosphate sits at around 0.6, but they told me it has got as high as 1.2. Now many tanks wouldn't cope well with phosphate that high, but I couldn't see any signs of nuisance algae and the corals for the most part were all really healthy with the exception of one or two that perhaps weren't quite as colorful as I might usually expect. Expect, but even then, growth and underlying health certainly didn't seem to be a problem. Now the lack of nuisance algae is probably down to having five tangs, and most people wouldn't recommend nitrates and phosphates that high. But this tank goes to show that some tanks can do just fine without pristine water parameters. The water is tested once a week and dosing of alkalinity and calcium is done manually a couple of times a week. And that was the part in all of this that surprised me the most. Although I suspect this tank can tolerate up and down water chemistry because it's so well established, having been up and running for several years now. For lighting, the tank has four Radeon XR30 Gen 5s, which at first look like overkill, but the beauty of having lights like that is that the spread is pretty decent, so the stacked aquascape doesn't block as much light as it might otherwise do, and ditto for the XXL coral growth. As to water movement, the tank runs what I would consider to be quite modest flow. That is helped a little by the output from the three canister filters, but there are just four power heads in the tank, three of which are hidden at the back to push water behind the rockscape, with one final AI Nero 5 doing the bulk of the heavy lifting at the front. And apart from that, there really isn't a lot more equipment. There's a UV steriliser in the cabinet for water clarity and algae control, and an auto top-off to replace evaporated fresh water. But the engine room of this tank is really just three canister filters. There's no skimmer, no phosphate reactors, no automatic filter roller, no refugium, and no fancy auto testers or aquarium computers. 
Now in that respect, this tank is very much the exception and not the rule. And I'm personally a huge fan of sumps for saltwater aquariums. They give you easy access to all of your equipment and allow you much more flexibility in terms of filtration options. And I wouldn't expect this canister filter setup to work well with an SPS dominated system filled with the most sensitive and finicky corals in the hobby. But the corals in this tank look absolutely fantastic and it does show that it can be done and done well. So if you don't have the budget for an all singing all dancing tank or you fancy something a little more simple and low maintenance, don't let the reef tank snobs tell you it's not possible. If you've got any questions then let me know in the comment section below and if you enjoyed the video give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week and until next time, Happy reaping.